Hey guys, this is Manu Kalia, physical therapist and Ayurveda herbalist. So uh, our next, this, this next video, I'm going to talk about uh, patellar tendon problems. And uh, the problem is commonly known as patellar tendonitis, which is incorrect. And I have posted a few videos in the past um, discussing why it's not tendonitis, why it is actually tendinosis. So um, and I talked about, I uh, had videos up there on treatment also, some scar tissue mobilization or, or cross friction massage technique videos on how to treat this issue. Um, but I wanted to give you a little bit uh, more detail on the problem, because a lot of you guys are asking me about this issue. And, um, and this is one of the problems I'm going to discuss in our upcoming program, uh, as I mentioned in some of my other videos. The program is going to be launching pretty soon, so make sure if you guys are interested, uh, and you want to be one of the first to find out about it, uh, go to the site and sign up. And I'll be uh, giving us some free copies also. Uh, and I'm going to go over all these knee related problems in that uh, program, uh, as well as discussing a lot of treatments, both holistic treatments for the problems, as well as physical therapy and exercise science related treatments. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, what the problem is exactly. And uh, and how we want to, what are the, uh, some of the contributing factors and then uh, treatment, okay? So uh, a little bit of anatomy, uh, your patellar tendon sits below your kneecap. Here's your kneecap, okay, here's the kneecap. It sits below that kneecap, it attaches to your shin, the upper part of the shin. Okay. Uh, it's, it's an extension of your quadricep muscles, your quadricep muscles are your thigh muscles in the front of the thigh. And your quadricep tendon is just above the kneecap, and it all comes down and attaches here. So its function is to help you extend or straighten out that leg, the lower leg, or your knee. So this problem is commonly referred to as jumper's knee, or a patellar tendonitis. But that's, the tendonitis is an incorrect term for this problem, okay? Uh, and that's why a lot of people are, what is the standard treatment they're prescribed for a lot of these issues? Uh, you rest it, you ice it, you use anti-inflammatory medications. So if it's not an infl inflammatory problem, why, uh, what is the point of doing anti-inflammatory medications then? Will the anti-inflammatory anti medications or icing and these things, will it help the problem? No, it won't help the problem. So histological studies, and, and, and this, is, this has been documented for some time now, that when they have looked at these problems, um, there are no inflammatory cells present, none to very few inflammatory cells present in these type of problems. So thus, it's not an inflammation. Anything that has an itis ending is in, uh, has to do with inflammation. So tendonitis, uh, conjunctivitis, uh, bursitis, any of these things, anything that has itis has inflammation. So in this problem, though it's listed as tendonitis, it is not a tendonitis because there, is no, there are no inflammatory cells present in this problem. And these are usually chronic problems that are due to overuse, overstrain injuries. Okay? There might have been one incident where let's say you, you were uh, playing a sport, you jumped up, you came down hard and you felt sharp pain there. Right? Maybe you did, you tore some, you did some microfiber damage, you tore some microfibers uh, or uh, and after a while, that tissue, uh, because it was injured, it, and, uh, it, and you kept playing on it, kept doing things on it, and the tissue didn't heal properly, it turned into a uh, tendinosis type of problem. So there might have been some inflammation initially, a little bit of inflammation when you had the initial injury, but normal inflammatory process heals itself, right? Your body had, it had these processes and inflammation is a normal part of healing, so it needs to take place. So your body initiates the process and it heals itself. But if the process doesn't move along properly, if you come or you continue irritating the problem, then it turns into an abnormal process. And it'll turn into a problem which is a tendinosis. So tendinosis, osis, the ending osis means degeneration. So it's a degenerated problem. Okay, uh, because of a, a repetitive strain or the initial injury and it not healing properly, it's turned into a uh, tendinosis or degeneration of the tendon. So, which makes the tendon weak, it can become thickened, it can
can have a disorganized alignment of the collagen fibers. Remember, collagen makes up the tendon. Uh, so normal collagen in our normal tissue lays down uh, smooth patterns, right? Parallel uh, fibers that are laid down in a smooth fashion. In a disorganized pattern, they're all jumbled. They're all knotted. Right? So, so not only does that compromise the strength of the tendon, but also compromises, it causes pain. It might restrict the mobility of the tendon. So, not, so because they're all jumbled up, it, one, <clears throat> it, the tendon is not as strong because they're not lining properly. Second thing is they're all jumbled up. When, when you do move, it might cause pain. It might be tight, right? And, it might, and, and so it, it, it compromises the strength of the tendon. So a lot of these issues, not only the tendon can be thickened, the tendon can be swollen, they can, can, can be, uh, and it can be weak, of course. So the problem tends to persist for quite a while unless you treat the problem properly. So, which means um, the treatment has to do uh, with the specific things like uh, promoting proper alignment of those collagen fibers. So scar tissue or, or uh, cross-stretching massage techniques, which are to break down the adhesions or the thickening that's formed along the tendon so the fibers realign and lay down properly. So once they lay down properly, then you can work on strengthening those fibers, right? Then you strengthen it so that uh, uh, the tendon gets stronger as well as the fibers are in proper orientation where they need to be, okay? Uh, so what are some of the causes or contributing factors? Of course, as I mentioned, you, know, you could have an injury, right? You came down wrong on that leg. Or, or a repetitive strain or overstrain of that tendon. You keep, you kept uh, playing the sport, you kept jumping or running, and it, or, or after a while it got irritated because it, it was just overworked, essentially. The healing couldn't keep up with the amount of uh, uh, work that tendon was doing. Um, keep in mind, mechanical things are going to change the amount of force that that tendon is uh, handling too. So what's happening at the foot in terms of the strength, flex, mobility of, of the foot, uh, or the ankle, or further up in the chain, the hip, uh, as well as the uh, even further up going into the core, for example. So anything that's happening above and below can be affecting things biomechanically. The other thing you want to consider is uh, internally what's going on within the system, right? Which makes one person more prone to getting injured than the other person. Overall health, internal health of the system, uh, which is causing one person to have irritation of the tendon or slowing down of the healing process, okay? So consider uh, from a bigger perspective internally what's happening, right? Uh, people are sometimes people are uh, uh, on uh, medications. Are those medications affecting the healing of the tendon too, okay? Circulation is compromising that area, so thus it's not facilitating the healing process. And by icing it, you're not helping that any either. Same with taking anti-inflammatories. A lot of studies are and it's shown that antifibers actually uh, will decrease uh, the healing time of a lot of these tendon, uh, tendon type problems or these issues. So consider that there are multiple issues that are contributing to the problem. And so a treatment approach also has to be multi pronged. So you're working on breaking down that scar tissue. You're improving the strength of that tendon and the surrounding muscles, not just here, your thigh muscles, your foot muscles, your hip muscles, all these areas. You're improving circulation to that region to promote the healing process, facilitate the healing process. Okay, Improving the internal health of your system so it helps the tendon heal faster. Okay? So I'm going to be discussing a lot of these things in the program. Okay, all, both the holistic standpoint as well as the physical therapy standpoint. We're going to go over exercises, I'm showing massage techniques, I'm, showing, I'm also sharing uh, um, herbal formulas. There's lots of information in this program. So make sure you uh, sign up for the program and it's going to be launching pretty soon. And I'm going to be giving out some free copies. So um, if, if you want to be one of the first people to find out about it, make sure you get on the, into the site and you sign up for it. And, um, Make sure you share this video if you found this was helpful and it can help others too.